talk about a couple different types of CSF leaks today, but all of them I think are underrecognized. Probably the most important kind of breakdown that we make right off the bat, which is leaks that come either out the nose or out the ear, what we call skull-based leaks, and leaks that occur along the spine. Because the symptoms are different, the treatments are different. First with skull-based leaks, it's patients with high pressure inside the head. That can happen in young women who are overweight, would be the most common. And the symptoms of a high pressure headache, worse at night, you wake up with a headache in the morning and you get leakage. You can lean forward and drip, 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 out, out it comes. The spinal leak patients, about 85% of patients will have an orthostatic headache, one that gets worse when they stand up, better when they lie down. The most common risk factor for the spinal CSF leak is joint hypermobility, because that can be a risk factor that maybe their connective tissues are looser or more prone to leaking. So that initial evaluation, you know, I can get a story um, by telehealth quite well and save the patient the trip and kind of outline, okay, so which tests are we likely gonna need and get them pre-scheduled? Once I have a clinical suspicion, then I go for imaging. And the first test really is MRI scan of the brain. They have to come here to get the high quality imaging and to get the treatments. But if we can start and end telehealth, I think it's saving a lot of people some time and convenience. They're now recognized kind of three big types. So the first one would be a bone spur that cuts through the dura or the meninges and causes a leak. A type two leak is a tear in the nerve root sleeve. Then the most recent, and this is the one where we've made a lot of advances recently, is called a fistula. Type one and the type two are blood patches. So it's putting a needle near the dura and injecting the patient's own blood to try to kind of clot it off, cover the hole, let it form a scar. And that works for the type one sometimes, definitely works for the type two leaks. But the fistula, that blood actually can't get into that internal hole. So for that will do a catheter through the groin, snake it up into the spine, and then glue the vein shot from inside. It's a minimally invasive and very effective treatment that in the past, we would have had to have done a spine surgery to, to cut open the spine and correct, but now we can do it through a catheter-based process. It, Mayo is a fantastic place to get to make those kind of advances. We're doing our best to educate uh, both patients and providers on how to recognize it because um, whether that means someone can get treatment locally or be referred here, you know, we wanna help because this is usually a treatable, reversible condition.